introducing the, the talk. The title is A Tale on Personal Uniqueness. Um, I think that's the reason you've got your orchid shirt on um, today. Sure. So <laughs> yes. That's really exciting. And uh, yeah, looking forward to hearing um, what you have to share with us today. Yes. And uh, you can see my, my PowerPoint now? Yes, we can yes. see. Yeah. Thank you. Well, uh, I'm uh, Paul Melkersen. Uh, I'm the lead of the Danish Orchid Consortium, and uh, I work at Albo University uh, with uh, research and anal analysis, uh, Albo University, Denmark. Um, and I will uh, talk a bit on personal uniqueness or identifying persons. Um, in 2018, um, a Danish uh, ID system had uh, 50 years of anniversary, and I will talk a bit on the history of that system. And then uh, I will look into what is a human being uh, through uh, the eyes of uh, Sven Brinkman, a Danish psychologist. Um, through these uh, six uh, images of, uh, of, uh, of human beings. And hopefully in the end, we will uh, be able to summarize some, some, uh, some lessons and, and some, something we can use in, in our work with, uh, with the orchids. Uh, so uh, this uh, civil registration system in Denmark, it was uh, created in 68. World War II was fresh in memory, and uh, politicians were worried that uh, the population would be suspicious of a system that might register religion. Another worry now in uh, these uh, times of, uh, of equality, uh, this is a bit funny maybe, but uh, another worry was that um, politicians were worried that women would object to, to having their birthday mentioned. Um, but there was a remarkable little opposition to the CPR system. Um, that may be because of trust in legislators and the system. And, um, and what uh, has been said about this is that there was a good balance between privacy, integrity, and on the other hand, uh, an efficient uh, public administrative system. So, uh, not very much opposition to this system. Um, before the system, there were uh, municipal registration um, uh, in paper. And there was one index card, card per household, household, one card per paterfamilias. Uh, and up to uh, 1915, uh, even economical and political rights were connected to this uh, paterfamilias. And up to the 80s, a married women paid tax through their husbands in Denmark. Uh, so, yeah. But in uh, 1961, a committee should look at electronic data processing in public management and especially in the population uh, registers. And um, that led to, uh, to, uh, to this CPR system in 68. And in the beginning, it was used in the tax system, labored market supplementary pension system, and also in uh, uh, statistics uh, for Denmark. Uh, and up uh, in, uh, in uh, present time, we have... Um, more than 100 registers in health areas, criminal registers, social registers, voting, and much more, which use this CPR system. So uh, uh, it is widely used in, in Denmark. And uh, well, when the anniversary, 50 years anniversary was, uh, people looked at what had come out of this, uh, using this system. Um, well, uh, of course, uh, 
maybe uh, efficient uh, administration, but also uh, some other things came indiv individualization uh, and gender equality. Um, women were not just part of a household. They were, they had their own CPR number uh, and each person had a CPR number. And then I would like to add about the system that there is no information about criminality, social conditions, health illnesses, education, etc. But the CPR system is a key to understand the other registers. So, so that's important to, to know that there's this key element. And uh, more can be said about the, the system. Um, newborn babies and newcomers to Denmark and Greenland are giving this uh, CPR number. So it's, it's every uh, person living in Denmark or Greenland. And even some persons abroad, taxable persons, uh, get this number. And uh, it's made of, out of uh, 10 digits. Uh, here's an example with, with a birth, birth date. And, uh, and the last four uh, numbers, are uh, that's a, a security number. Um, women have uh, Digital, the, the, an equal digit in the end, and men have an unequal digit in the end. So this example, that's a woman born in 99. Uh, there are some legislation around the CPR system, of course. It may not be, the numbers may not be disclosed and seen on letters and parcels, etc. And um, there are also restrictions on private company use. Uh, so, um, talking benefits, um, health administration, of course, uh, and from another perspective, uh, it's said that having a Danish CPR number is uh, beneficial. It provides access to a welfare system with medical care and compensation for loss of income in case of illnesses or unemployment. So. In, in some way, you could say the number is access to, to, to this welfare system. And in all this, uh, in this history of, of the CPI system, trust is the cornerstone. Um, but as we all know, trust is challenged. Um, there was an European social survey on trust uh, where Denmark uh, was number one. Uh, but there are a lot of challenges to, to this uh, around trust, fake news, um, conspiracy theories, faith in science going down, faith in authorities going down, a lot of bureaucracy uh, and it's tiresome and, and it tires down trust in, in, in public, public systems. So should we have uh, less uh, bureaucracy, less administration? Um, maybe not necessarily. I think uh, one of the reasons for, for not having bureaucracy and administration is that uh, key performance indicators and scorecards are confused with classical administration and bureaucracy. And uh, you could say that some of the recent scandals in administration and banks were characterized by lack of classical administration. Uh, scandals have led to lower trust in public administration also. Um, scandals have led to new codices for duties in public admi administration. And these codices are very similar to classic bureaucratic uh, duties described by Max Weber more than a hundred years ago. Um, and then in, in research administration, which is maybe a bit closer to, to what we are, are discussing here at the, the Pit, Peter Palooza. Um, well, bureaucracy and measuring science and, and having all the administrative system around science What's it all good for? Well, um, well, it, it could be a description of science and research outputs. Uh, 
descriptions which can be used in, in, in very good ways. Um, and it can make real science efforts vi visible. Um, and when research quality is challenged, um, you see fake research and fake journals by fake authors, um, then maybe research, healthy research administration is, is, uh, is uh, an answer to some of this or a, a way to, to get rid of, rid of some of this. Uh, peer review may be challenged, how to f find a good re reviewer with name confusion. Uh, uh, you think you, you have the right person, but, uh, but uh, it's just the right name for the person. So there are some arguments for, for bureaucracy and research administration. When uh, you look at personal incentives and, and the personal uh, view on this, maybe it's not so clear cut. Um, recently, uh, Isabella Peters had a, a presentation on, uh, on a conference in Denmark and, and she talked about dilemmas for open science metrics. And, and uh, I think this can be broadened out to, to uh, general relevance too. Uh, you should look at the meaning of metrics, meaning of, of the administrative duties you, you uh, put on, on people. Then we have this efficiency of indicators illusion that it's, it's hard work. Uh, the more impact, the harder. Uh, if you um, have a lot of uh, publications or a lot of presentations, you, if you should uh, show the evidence, then it's a lot of work. Uh, the more uh, publications or presentations or activities, the more work to, to show evidence. And are indicators the right incentives also? Uh, we have to, of course, uh, work with that also. Uh, maybe we should find a, a new human way to be bureauc bureaucrats. Uh, so to, to answer that, we might look at what is a human being. Um, well, this is uh, Sven Brinkman talking, um, or, well, I show some of the, the, the images that, that he, uh, he has on this, uh, what is a human being. Uh, Human being is a biological man, uh, um, being, uh, uh, and, and we are nature, but uh, nature in a, a specific way, we are dependent on, on, uh, on what's around us. Uh, we live in mutual combination with, with what's around us. Uh, and you could say that with Homo sapiens, the wise man, the thinking man, um, we went from the myth of creation to the myth of maintenance that, that uh, we live in this mutual relationship with, um, with uh, the surroundings. Uh, we are here to, to clean and maintain um, and to, to live in a world and, and be sure that it will be for our next generations also. Uh, man is uh, rational, you could also say uh, homo economicus, the economic man. Man has purpose uh, to become human. We can reflect scientifically, philosophical and morally and fa find a way to live virtuous. Uh, man has a potential not to become the best version of himself, but to become human. Um, but we should be aware technology may destroy human self-control. Technology may interfere with rationality. Then, um, homo sentimentalis, uh, the sensitive man. And this is actually not in, in opposition to a man as a rational being, because uh, man can think and uh, understand the world. We are rational, but uh, sentiments uh, give a direction to, to ration. Uh, if you think about shame, that's a feeling, that's a sentiment. And uh, shame may be 
telling Russian something about what is good or what is bad. Uh, man is social. Um, we have uh, rationality and sentiments, uh, but we can use ourselves to manipulate it and torture others. We can be inhuman and uh, totalitarian regimes may teach us uh, that we are social beings that can only be human when recognizing all other uh, humans as uh, human. Then future man beyond uh, humanism. Uh, that's also a perspective on, on being human. Um, uh, we try to overcome sorrow, uh, experienced injustice, social uh, marginalization, etc. But uh, maybe some of these phenomena are meaningful. Death may remind of, uh, us of the uh, value of life. Sorrow may remind us of love to a, a deceased. Uh, this uh, future uh, man um, is uh, partly from Fukuyama, the end of history and the last man. <clears throat> then the last uh, perspective on this is the uh, religious man. And what is faith? That's a big question. But we can maybe narrow it down to be faithful to something or someone. Um, we had this modern self-help culture be true to yourself but maybe we should be true to the demand to do something for others or be something for others so um what may this uh, human perspective uh, or this perspective perspective on human beings tell us uh, in relation to orchid um, i think uh Homo sapiens may tell us that we are here to clean and maintain, and that's also some of what is uh, behind Orchid. I think it's uh, um, it's also uh, a, a, a system to 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 help things go more smoothly and, and be 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 proper. Uh, rational man, technology shouldn't be. Uh, preventing self-control, and, and that's something we should should remember when we work with orchid. Sentimental man, sentiments, joy, sorrow, guide reasons, but um, or guide reason. Uh, so we should give science in these fields a chance in scholarly information systems. That's important. Uh, social man, inclusion uh, to embrace all research fields. Uh, that's important. So, and also go glo global. We just uh, had a presentation from Africa. It's it's nice to 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 see from all the countries in in, uh, in this Peter Pelusa. Future man, uh, when Orki is fully integrated in all system, and we have the last uh, bit, uh, what then? It might be worth uh, thinking a bit uh, about that also. Uh, religious man, um, should we be true to our visibility as a researcher or should we be true to science? Uh, I think that's an important question, which is also uh, related to, to working with orchids. When you look at orchid now, uh, well, there are uh, many good things to say. Orchid uh, works acro across platforms, and that's about benefits for all. You could say that some citation databases, maybe they only benefit uh, STEM research areas, uh, but Orchid tries to, to go into all areas, and that's very important. Um, and you are in charge, uh, not only technology, uh, in Orchid, you have uh, on all levels, you can choose should it be visible for everyone, trusted parties, only me. Uh, so, then uh, back to the 50 years of anniversary of the CPR. Uh, are there any familiarities between CPR and Orchid? Well, openness, trust embodied in both, and we 
we learned that uh, it was uh, very efficient for the CPR system. So I think it's it's uh, nice that ORCID also has uh, this openness trust embodied in it. Um, equality CPR uh, shows that gender is equal and social position is uh, equal. And ORCID uh, works with uh, equality among research fields. Benefits, CPR access to the Danish welfare system. And in ORCID, uh, you may get access to impact counting systems in a broader way than, than some of uh, the uh, citation database systems or other uh, counting systems. CPR, is it a key or profile? Uh, CPR is this key which helps the other systems. ORCID is a key that helps all the systems. And sometimes it's also a profile. Um, so you could ask what's what's most important there. Yeah, I put uh, the presentation on uh, Sinodo, so you can maybe go into some of the references. Uh, some of this is in Dan Danish, but I think if you want to work with this perspective of what's a human, then you could um, also find, of course, something in English and. and uh, there are many descriptions of uh, uh, philosophy around human beings. Then if we have time, I would like to make a small mention media or should we go for questions? What do you think, uh, Matt? Um, I think we can go into the mention media if you'd like, um, yeah. Paul. And um, if um, there's any questions, please feel free to use the ask question button. Anyone can type in. Um, but let's go to the mention media. Um, yeah. And there are some questions coming through in the chat, um, but let's start with the Mentimeter and then we can jump onto those. I think we've got six minutes. Do you see this uh, Mentimeter here? Yeah. So uh, I don't know if you know it, but you should go to www.menti.com, menti.com, and use this code here. And then you should enter three words. Uh, characterizing or answering this question, what is a human being? So uh, what I would like is a picture of, uh, well, I took this in because it's a Peter Palooza, it's a party. So we should have a little, uh, little paintings on the wall and I hope we'll have a nice painting here, hopefully. From if we have time enough. Uh, so you go to this uh, address and enter the code 197356. Can't. <laughs> yes. Soul, collaborative, social, squishy, individual, consciousness. I think we'll give it a, a minute or so. And then the idea is to have this picture of what is a human and human being. And then afterwards we can have a picture of what is uh, orchid and uh, then compare the two pictures. Here. So let's finish this one. And uh, 
And let's have the other one. Um, here it is. We have three minutes more, so. So let's go here. Ah, it takes a bit of time. It always happens when you, while that's loading, Paul, the, there was a yeah. question about should Orchid evolve more into a researcher passport with Visa that allows entry into sensitive databases. Interesting to get your thoughts on that. Well, I think... Uh... Visas is uh, it's it's, it's uh, telling me that some people shouldn't be allowed. So I think uh, Orchid shouldn't work with visas because uh, then you would prohibit some people from entering the wholly sensitive databases. Yeah, I think that openness is really important. Um, that yeah. Orchid is one of their founding principles. But I guess the concept of being able to sort of being a universal, unique identifier globally, um, there is some application there, which is interesting um, to sort of um, reuse and exchange information. So, and yeah, I wouldn't describe a good idea for him. Yeah, I think that's also an important point, Jan, um, that you share about, you know, the benefits for for, for a researcher. Um, yeah. And that's, you know, also, again, core to some of the things that Orca talk about in sort of um, being researcher-centered and, and focused. Yeah, I agree. So it's not, of course, a primarily impact counting systems, but, but that's often where you get your visibility from or yeah prestige so what is orchid image is building up uh, and i think we don't have that much more time but uh, yeah i think we up on the hour so um yeah i just wanted to thank you very much paul and um thank really you. interesting to sort of take those lessons learned and and sort of draw that comparison was really interesting and um i think something that's you know food for thought for us all and um really interesting topic um if we can just thank uh, paul and also all of the other presenters in this block and um, thank you very much for um, attending and um, we will now end this block and uh, switch over to the next block so thank you all and hope you enjoy the remaining sessions for today